Hi, this is Sally, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make the panels for a bed skirt. The lady that I'm doing this for, her bed has wooden sides and slats, so to have a bed skirt that goes over the box springs and down the sides is not possible because of the slats. So we're going to be attaching the panels to the bed frame and she wants to use the sticky velcro which I'm not actually keen on especially here in Texas it's hot and it's humid and it might not last very long but it's her house it's her project and unlike me she actually keeps her house a lot cooler so there shouldn't be too much humidity so let's get on with it the actual drop I need, the finished length has to be 9 inches, so I'm going to have to have a hem and obviously a top. One of these ribbons, from the top of this bow, it goes down here, so obviously I can't do it top of the bow to top of the bow, but I can, and I'm looking at this, it's a drop pattern. So I can take a line across here for one part of the panel, and then I'll go further up to the top of the next bow here for the next panel. Because there's a slight difference, not a huge difference in how the pattern goes, what I'll do is all of the ones that are cut with this part of the pattern, I'll put on one side of the bed, and all the ones I cut with this part of the pattern, which is slightly different, I will put on the other side of the bed. I think it's seven inches show under the side of the bed and there's nothing going at the foot because the football comes to about maybe an inch from the floor so we're not doing that. All I'm going to do is fold my fabric and match the tops of this one and this one because they're identical and then on the next one I will find the identical ones on here and match the top so all I've got to do is fold this in half, straighten it and then cut down either end. Really easy, easy project. I need three and a half per side because it's 80 inches. I ended up cutting seven panels, one of which I cut in half, and I prefer to sew from the bottom of panels to the top. There are occasions when I don't do it that way. Pull that over by about a quarter of an inch, that's usually an average seam allowance so that I can match the pattern. Steam from the top of the pattern down to the bottom on each panel so that they all correspond. One set of panels for one side, bed frame and then I will do exactly the same for the other side of the bed frame. I will keep them separate because I don't want to mess them up. I'm going to pop this underneath here. The bottom of the ribbon is here. Pop this one on top and I am going to, because there's only the top part of the pattern that lines up, which is actually quite good. This means that I don't have to worry about the whole length, just some of it. That looks about right. If it's not perfect, it's not going to really show because a lot of this is up underneath the side of the bed panel. Pop that underneath and I'm going to to keep the center of here running along the fold here. I'm going to go forward and back, just a few stitches, line up the top of the pattern, pull it so it's taut, continue sewing along the fold line pressed in earlier. I'm coming to where the pattern is, I'm going to fold this back to make sure that the pattern is where it needs to be and then sew to the end. I don't have to go forward and back at the top because it's going to be cut off. I will, however, pop this back down here, change my stitch to my favorite zigzag, which is 10. It goes straight and then a zigzag, straight zigzag. Perfect for this. Run the seam that I've just put in along the side here. And you don't have to use a walking foot, a plain foot would be fine. I'm going to sew all the way to the top. Then I'm going to cut the extra fabric off along the outside of the zigzag. Not too close that I cut it, but close enough that it doesn't 
shred. This is one of the times you could do with an overlocker, but I found in this job I never used the overlocker. It was just a waste of money. It was easier just to keep everything on the same machine. Actually, it's not quite right. When I had my office, I had a machine like this, which I found more useful than the overlocker. So that's my first one. I'm going to move it along and put the next one in. So I'll line up this one and then put this one on top, just like I did on the first one. This is the outside edge and I need to put a hem on it. Now I've got quite a bit of extra fabric. All I'm going to do is fold that over like that and fold it all the way down like this. So I've finger pressed it and I'm just going to cut that up as straight as you can make it. So to put the side hem on I'm going to fold that over and measure that to one inch. So there's my one inch. Finger press that in and then fold the fabric into that fold so you've got a nice little hem. This is the really nice thing about small projects. Put that there and again at the top fold that over measure my one inch. You could do it two centimeters if you wanted it's up to you finger press that in finger press the side in like that and then pull it straight now what happens is if you pull it straight your hem should be more or less half an inch width all the way down and i'm going to sew that in and i'll do the same on the other side so this is the second side i'm doing exactly the same thing measure my inch fold the raw edge into that crease and pop it underneath there and again this end there we go measure across put my crease in fold that in and pull it straight should go in nicely and then sew here's the bottom of the fabric the ribbons hang down fold that up like i did for the side to my one inch there we go fold the raw edge into that crease and up just like i already have slide that underneath and i'm going to go forward and back a couple of stitches then I'm going to make my way across. I'm going to fold that up to here, fold that in. And because it's narrower lengths, it will hold quite nicely. When I get to where I folded it, I'm going to redo this for the next short length. And I'm going to do that all the way across the base of this panel. I'm going to measure this up to nine inches. So that's there. Because this is going on the inside of the the bed frame the fabric has to point out so that's why I've got the right side of the fabric facing up which I'm going to pop there and then I'm going to measure from here to here to my inches because I want this to be as straight as possible there we go now you could put a ruffle foot on and this would just automatically pull it in for you if not you could put two rows of very long stitches beside each other and pull them in and then sew them onto a piece of plain tape and then staple this into the bed frame or you could use velcro so pull it up and then add it to velcro i would personally not suggest using sticky velcro on the fabric because you're going to have to sew through it because it does fall off i would suggest if you did do that then you make sure that your needle is covered in silicon every short length you're going to have to re-silicon everything otherwise the glue gets stuck to everything and it's a really nasty mess so i'm going to go forward and back stuff I'm using is a tape that has um, a rough edge which will be hooked by the hook side of the velcro that will be stapled and glued to the bed. So every few inches I'm going to re-measure my nine inch drop and then sew up to that and then re-measure for the next length. Now this is left over from curtaining that I used to make. As I come into the end here, I'm going to pull the threads through like this and I'm going to fold this underneath. Now even if you are using just plain tape just to hold your gathers, always fold it underneath there. It just makes everything look nice and neat. Everything's hidden. I'm going to go along to the end and finish. You really don't want this showing like this. I'm going to peel that back slightly and start cutting and I'm going to cut it literally just the top not the bottom just under where this comes down so everything will be hidden like this if this folds underneath that you can easily cut on through if you feel that you can't do it this way then what you could do is measure from the top to the bottom fold it over like you do with the curtain and then cut it back then put your tape on so it's really up to you how you do this part seeing as i don't really want to be messing around too much i'm going to do it this way you cannot do it if it's gathered you have to cut it back 
before you gather it otherwise you're going to have a horrible mess on your hands and then when i get to the other end i'm just going to cut that into that corner not cutting the tape or my fingers and all i'm going to do is pop this back under and i'm going to sew the second side of the tape in place you'd have to sew both sides of velcro in or any kind of tape that you're going to do the top with just so that there's even wear and tear and again i've got to pull the loops out of the way when I finished I've just gone backwards and forwards and made sure that that's all nicely in there. I can iron it just to make sure it looks nice and crisp. Okay so what I've done is I've got these still left open so I can pull them up and put the ruffle in for me so they'll look quite pretty. I put double in so they should be quite full. The other thing that I've done with this is so I don't have to have really long threads is I've put a row of stitching down here which should stop these threads from pulling through so if I pull here nothing happens. If I pull here oh something does happen that shouldn't happen it doesn't always catch so always make sure that they do I can just put another stitch in there to hold it this means that I can pull one end from the center measure up half of it and then pull from the center and measure up from the other half so I have to redo that that's okay not a problem thank you for joining me on this small project I think this lady is going to be very pleased with these once they're all pulled up all you're going to be able to see is the lower half which should the part of the bow and the ribbons hanging down. I think that's the best placement for this pattern because the top inch will be behind the bar. If you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe, hit the bell button, and a few thumbs up will be absolutely brilliant. And in the meantime, see you later, take care. Ciao.